Hello everyone, reporting today for Fun Robotics Network, I'm Rob Haas, and with me here is Team 18270, Robo Players from Irving, Texas. They were recently the Inspire Award winner at the First in Texas North Regional Championship, and perhaps more importantly for this, behind the bot, they're currently ranked 7th by non-penalty OPR in the world, with the number 4th teleop. They have one of the best intakes I've seen in Into the Deep. It is super, super fast. They had a 283 2v1 score, just all around awesome team. Can't wait to get into it. Coming up on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Studica Robotics is everything your team needs to build, learn, and compete. Check out their FTC starter kit, intake hub kit, and odometry wheel options at studica.com slash robots. Teams in the USA can get up to 25% off and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. All right, Robo players. So I think every season you guys just have one of the fastest robots I see. Just like every subsystem is just super super optimized so talking about your drivetrain briefly is there anything you think that's like really important there that that allows you to maintain such speed yeah so uh our drive train is uh about fifth one to one on 435 rpms we have a gear on our uh each one of our drivetrain motors which uh is actually used for our ppo so um it's just regular drift force wheels and the it's just HD5 belt. The cool. yeah, and with with that 435 RPM, so obviously it's really important to be light. Uh, you know, when you have such a fast ratio, how how heavy is your robot as a whole? Our robot's like 21, 22 pounds because we use full carbon fiber. Wow, yeah, that, that's awesome. Now jumping right into that intake, that's kind of one of the biggest reasons we wanted to talk about you guys. I see those massive gears at the bottom. Can we start with that and then walk me through the intake design as a whole after? Yeah, so pretty much the way our intake works is that we have a bare motor gear, which is connected to one of those servo CD gears. And then we have two bigger gears here that basically drive each other. And then they're connected to this uh, bare motor gear. Mm -hmm. And so pretty much whenever the motor spins, both of them automatically spin in opposite directions. And then also um, the tubing gear is belted to the angle at the back, which helps bring in the vent holes. I see. I see. And so uh, with that, like, was this was this a system you had started with all the way from day one? Or like, did you start with a servo, then you upped it to the bare motor? Walk me through the progression there. Yeah, so our first version was actually very similar to this. We had um, a bearing motor with the same like layout, basically. Except um, throughout the season, we iterated upon it, and then we added the top roller, which helps bring in samples um, much more quickly. Mm -hmm. And yeah, before we get into that top roller, one more question there. So like, obviously weight was a big concern for you guys. And I've seen a lot of teams use like either Axon servos or like Melon Box Super Servo to, to make their intakes lighter. But you guys went straight for the motor. Why? We just liked the extra power that our motor gave us. And we just wanted to have fast intake. Uh, we tried a super servo last year. It wasn't that good. We, we weren't able to get that much power out of it. We just wanted to go for a motor in order to have the fastest possible. Cool, cool. All right, so let's let's jump into that top roller and we'll go through the rest of the intake path after. On our front uh, tubing, we have a we have directly mounted to our axon bevels, which slow it down, but then we have a belted speed increase. So we slow down and we speed back up in order to get the same speed. So these both of these, uh, the top roller and the side rollers actually move at the same pace. So that's the way, that's how we're able to transfer from this point to this point. Okay, very, very neat. And as far as um, kind of dimensioning goes for, for all of these components, because of the flexibility of the surgical tubing, was that not really something you had to tune? Or did you find that you had to tune these, these dimensions and like the distances between the tubing and like all of those factors a lot? We mostly just guessed, and then I think we got it right from like the second and third try. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Too much changing in that. Yeah. 
Cool. Yeah, and we'll, we'll have a bunch of B-roll also showing your intaking, but can we can we also see it on screen here um, and see what that path looks like? <laughs> it's just yeah, pretty much pretty much instant. All right. So as far as uh, like jams and things like that go. How did you uh, ensure that the sample would always be oriented correctly? Like, were there any small things that just really elevated how it worked? Uh, I think the biggest thing was the actual addition of the top color. Because originally, what was happening is the... Originally, what was happening is that the tubing would actually keep the samples out. But then mm. the top color, we were able to like reorient them back inside. So that was able to like increase the range, even though it was just in the front. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, last last question I want to ask about your guys' intake is uh, when it comes to collecting samples near the walls of the submersible, how do you guys do that? Is that something you face challenges with? Or, yeah, just, just talk about that in general. Yeah, so for us, grabbing samples that are, like, against the perimeter of the submersible are kind of hard because, like, of how long your intake goes. So even if we're all the way up against um, the submersible, we're not able to get it. Um, so you have to go like at a different angle to try to get it, mm. but it hasn't been too much of a problem for us so far because there've always been more samples. But I just don't know how that's gonna go in worlds or something. Okay, yeah. So like, come worlds, is that where you would look at adding some sort of sweeper mechanism, or what are you thinking there? Uh, currently, we don't have enough servos for another sweeper mechanism because we use. Okay. Uh, currently, we have. Uh, we were planning on adding level three, so that would be an extra two servos. But right now, we're at ten. Okay. So we wouldn't have any more. All right. Well, yeah. Let's let's go through those ten servos real quick, and then we'll go into the deposit. Yes. Okay. So we have two servos for our take flip right here. We have a axon micro for our slash. We have two servos, two servos down here for our PTO. So like that. And then we have five. Servos on an object. So it was it's a claw here, one for our wrist, two for our flip, and one for our rail. So this is total five circles. And it's all on a circle hub. Wow, right okay. Pretty pretty interesting. Okay, so so with that servo hub you're only running the power and ground. Uh, the power ground in R is four eighty five down into yeah. the control hub is that correct okay very neat and yeah. what one more question about the latch there so is that also sensorized or how are you using the latch for for the intake so um whenever we intake our latch is always closed and um the only reason it would ever open is either to transfer whenever it retracts or if we get a wrong color sample um it just flips back and then it to spit it out very neat, very neat. Okay, jumping into your transfer sequence now. Walk me through that, um, and then we'll get into your deposit. Okay, so whenever we intake, it's like this. So when we retract, we bring up the lid and we retract. Uh, this cloth is open, but it comes in like this. So it really fits directly into our cloth. I see. And our cloth just needs to close and then fits. It should be like okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, and now talking about your deposit, how has it changed throughout the season, um, if at all? Yeah, so for our version one uh, robot, we originally did not have this horizontal rail. Uh, we just had a longer arm so that it, we pretty much were forced to, we, had, we could do this. So we had, when we scored samples, it was out here, when we scored specimen, we had to, we were barely able to reach the bar. So for this design, this full carbon fiber, we actually added a rail. So now we are actually, we can still, we can now pretty easily reach the bar and we were able to score uh, samples from the back pretty easily. Okay, yeah. And uh, so with, with that, uh, you know, kind of string pulley design um, for the horizontal extension, why go with that instead of a linkage or some other mechanism? Uh, so, for our uh, horizontal rail, we just wanted to make sure that we had linearity because we didn't want to have linkage. We, didn't, we just wanted to be able to set positions every time and we felt like the linkage would not give us to be accuracy. So, it was just like, if we make a small change, we know exactly how much it is doing with string. 
for a link it's, it's not like exact because for like close to over center it's for each degree rotation of the circle it's a move, the rail actually moves less so it's not as reliable or we kind of we didn't think of it as we thought of it as a little bit more difficult to like tune and optimize because we can't just set exactly halfway is halfway the vision of the circle mm-hmm. got it got it yeah now talking about lift speed a little bit, your lift is extremely fast. Walk me through the actuation system, how many motors, what ratios, any counter springing. Tell me about all of it. Yeah, so for our uh, lift, we actually use two bare motors and we use a Melanbotics 14 tooth pulley. And this is uh, belted onto our main shaft, which is right here. So that main shaft is uh, basically connecting both of our uh, motors. And that main shaft also holds both the, sh- the two spools. So each of those spools are 16 millimeters in diameter. And it's small enough that uh, uh, that at the high RPM that a uh, motor, uh, that the shaft runs at, it still did go pretty fast. Uh, for okay. our counter springing, we use uh, surgical tubing right here. And it's not the most, it's not the optimal solution, but it's still enough to speed us up and then make our um, cycles faster. So are you stringing only one side of your lift and then counter springing the other side? We're stringing both sides of the lift and we're counter springing just one side. Okay, I see. But, okay, okay, I see I see the string on, on the other side as well. And then for your retract, is that like a single retraction in the middle or how does that work? Uh, for our retract, we have two retractions, but we, we, we just felt that keeping, we had to make sure that since we have such a small spool, our string was wrapping over itself a lot. Mm-hmm. So we had to make sure that it wouldn't like, before, with, with it actually being tight, we weren't actually able to go down all the way. So we needed to, we had to uh, release the tension on this a little bit. Also because the two sides are linked, um, both on the same shaft and like the spools are connected. Um, one side stays a bit higher than the other because of the tension. So, um, we just kept the tension very minimal in order to minimize the amount that this side sticks up. I see, I see. Okay, now talking about your hang, you've mentioned the PTO a bunch of times. So walk me through the mechanism you have going on there and then I have a bunch of more questions. Okay. So for our PTO, we have a Google Super Speed that is um, connected to a linkage pretty much. So when our Super Speed just turns about 45 degrees, it's able to go from this position to this position and then the gear on our three gears and the gears on the motor they engage and then that transfers the power from the drivetrain to the the single main shaft. That is very cool and so you're using all four of your drivetrain motors for your hang then is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And when when designing the system and specking everything um, how did you make sure that all of the speeds and stuff match up and you get that desired torque? Um, we kind of just match the speed, or we kind of match the torque of our version one. So our version one was just uh, two four thirty fives because that was just the ratio of our spools, and we just hung on those same motors. We just wanted to be able to match the speed because we uh, match the torque because we knew that we had a lighter bot than our version one, and if we just kept the same torque, we'd still be able to hang, but we'd be able to go faster because of the increased power of the four motors. Mm-hmm. Okay, got it. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And I think I saw another sensor in that area. We maybe haven't had it covered it. Is that like a magnetic limit switch? What's what's going on there? Yeah, that's the magnetic limit switch for our intakes. Whenever it comes in, there's a magnet here that makes a sense. I see. And do you have a similar system for your vertical lift or only for your intake? Yeah, yeah. it's the vertical lift magnet switch is right here. I see, I see. Okay. Well, Robo players, thank you guys so much. I mean, yeah, your robot is just super, super fast. I think the last thing I want to touch on is driver practice. You guys are clearly one of the best when it comes to that. Any advice for teams looking to improve their driver practice? Um, we just spend like a lot of time per week, especially like the week before um, the competition and just doing driver practice and testing autos just to make sure they're consistent. And if anything breaks, they'll break in practice and not at the competition. Okay. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. Reporting for Fun Robotics Network, I'm Ab Haas, and this is Team 18270, the Robo Players.
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. StudiCut Robotics is everything your team needs to build, learn, and compete. Check out their FTC starter kit, intake hub kit, and odometry wheel options at studica.com slash robots. Teams in the USA can get up to 25% off and apply for grants at studica.com slash robots.